Hey guys, thanks for tuning in and watching our new series called Before I Go. And uh, if you don't know me, my name is Tyler and I am the next gen pastor here at Crossroads. So let me start with asking this question. Have you ever had a friend that you just, that just sneaks out from a get together or a party without just saying anything? You just like, where did they go? Like you were just hanging out with them and you know that they had to leave soon, but you look around and they're just, they're just gone. And I had that happen to me recently with one of our leaders who is also named Tyler. And uh, we were helping our new lead pastor move into his house and Tyler and I were hanging out and I knew that he had to leave in about 10 minutes, but five minutes later I was talking with my wife and we looked around and we're like, hey, where's Tyler? He just slid out without saying bye to anyone. He was just gone. Over the next few weeks, as we move toward Easter weekend, we'll be looking at some of the, the last things that Jesus said to his disciples before he was killed. You see, Jesus knew his time with them was short, so he took advantage of those last days. And it's as if he was saying, hey, before I go, here are some key things that I don't want you to forget. And in fact, some of his most profound statements actually happened right before he died. And they were written down by four guys named Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Now, some of us may have complicated feelings about the Bible, but what's hard to deny is that the Bible is a great place to go when we want to know what Jesus said. And whether or not you believe everything that you've heard about Jesus, many would say that his actual words and the way that he lived have shaped history and culture in a positive way. And the fact that they were written down is a good thing because we all tend to forget, right? We forget where we put our homework or phone or retainer and the TV remote but our tendency to forget impacts more than just that. Our forgetfulness can be one of the biggest barriers to healthy relationships. We forget what others have done for us and thank them for and take them for granted. We forget things that have happened to others and it co communicates a lack of care. We forget promises that we make and it, it hurts the feelings of other people. We only remember what we want to remember, and some call it selective memory, like remembering our, our version of what happened or only remembering certain parts and erasing the rest. Or maybe we just remember the things that impact what's right in front of us. The same thing can happen in our connection and relationships with God. When life gets overwhelming or difficult, sometimes we have a selective memory with our faith. We, get, we can focus so much on, the, on what's happening in front of us that we forget what God has already done for us in the past. In fact, I, I think Jesus knew that about us. He knew that we'd be forgetful. So he shares something with his closest friends to help them out before it even becomes a problem. And Jesus and his closest friends and followers, also known as disciples, were having dinner. It wasn't just any meal though, it was the Passover meal, which was part of a huge important traditional celebration. What the disciples didn't realize was that it would be their last meal with Jesus before his death. And Jesus, however, knew that. And because of it, he shared some important things with the people that he was closest to. So real quick, imagine if you were having one last conversation with the people that you love most. What would you say before you left? If you're anything like me, you have no clue what you'd actually say at the moment, but you'd want it to be important, right? You'd want those words to matter. And it's easy to imagine that Jesus felt the same way. Maybe that's why he didn't waste any of, the, uh, any of his final words. Some of his last words shaped history and the future. They completely redefined what it meant to trust God. But before we get into exactly what Jesus said, let's talk about what this dinner party was all about. Hundreds of years before Jesus arrived on earth, God miraculously saved the Jewish people from slavery in Egypt. The Egyptian Pharaoh had been using the Jewish people as slaves and since that meant he got to, to build his kingdom out of free labor, he wasn't planning to let them go. He's like, no, you can't go. I get free stuff out of you guys. So God sent a messenger, Moses, to request that the enslaved people be released. Then every time Pharaoh said no, God sent a new plague to get under the, his skin and speed up the process. And there were plagues of things like frogs and bugs. Over and over, God sent a wave of something challenging to get Pharaoh's attention and remind him why he should release the enslaved people. The last plague was really awful though. The firstborn child of every family died. That's morbid, I get it, I know. For the Israelite families, however, there was a way out. And this sounds wild, but hang with me here. 
they were told to place some lamb's blood on the doors as a sign that they were the Israelite people, like they were God's people. And in the past, God would pass over, or in the night, God would pass over the firstborn male in those homes and allow them to live. And the Israelite people obeyed the instructions and their children were saved from the last plague. It caused so much pain in Egypt that Pharaoh finally allowed them to leave. He's like, get out of my, get out of my cell. I don't want you there anymore. And it was the end of slavery and a new beginning for the Israelite people. And from that moment on, the Israelite, now known as the Jewish people, had, had, uh, they have had a tradition of remembering the Passover. They have a meal to celebrate how God had rescued their ancestors. They gather around a table, much like many of us do for holidays, and retell the story of how they were once slaves, but God rescued them. They've made a habit of remembering. They didn't just assume that they'd always know how God was faithful to them. So they set aside time, put it on the calendar, and got intentional about telling the story of how it happened. And just like many of our holiday traditions include, include food, so, so does theirs. So part of the meal involved eating bread that didn't have yeast in it. So it was really thin bread and drinking wine. So take a look at this video to show you what I mean. So maybe you've heard of this and it's called communion and it can look different depending on different traditions. So maybe you've seen it like this where it's individually packaged or maybe you've seen it like this where they pass around the plate and they pour juice or wine. Or sometimes it looks a little bit more like this where you rip off a piece of bread and then you dip it into a cup. So no matter what it looks like, it all symbolizes the same thing. So in Jesus's time, they used unleavened bread, which was made without yeast, representing how quickly the Israelites left Egypt. It could take hours for the yeast and the bread to rise, and there was no time to wait for that. Now, the wine represented the blood of the lambs that were sacrificed to save the Jews. You got it? Okay, good. So this now brings us back to the table where Jesus is celebrating. Remember, Jesus was Jewish. He grew up celebrating, remembering, and retelling the story of the Passover along with his family. Now, he was doing the same with his disciples. They probably all knew how the dinner was supposed to go and how the story was supposed to be told. But then Jesus does something new. Check it out in Luke 22, verse 19 through 20. He took some bread and gave thanks to God for it. Then he broke it in pieces and gave it to the disciples saying, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took another cup of wine and said, this cup is the new covenant between God and his people. An agreement con confirmed with my blood, which is poured out as a sacrifice for you. So this was a huge moment for the disciples. And even though they may not have understood what Jesus meant, they knew he had just changed the meaning of their whole tradition. They had always celebrated and remembered what had happened long ago in Egypt. But now it was about remembering what he was about to do. The bread and the wine represented his body and his blood. He was saying, these things now represent my incredible love for you, which has compelled me to live with you and die for you. Every time you eat this bread and drink this wine, I want you to remember. Remember me. Remember my sacrifice for you. Remember my great love for you. What I love about this moment is that it's more, it's about so much more than just a holiday. Passover was a special time of remembering, but what about the bread and the wine? Jewish people had those every day. It was their normal food. Jesus made two of the most ordinary parts of their lives significant. Jesus wanted them to remember him every time that they ate and drank. Why? Because Jesus knew that life would be difficult and painful, not just for the disciples, but for everyone who read his words in the future, including us. So Jesus knew that in those difficult moments, it's easy for us to get caught up in what's right in front of us and forget where we came from, or to focus on the bad and forget the good, or to forget that Jesus died for us to demonstrate his great and unfailing love. Jesus knows that we tend to forget. So before he left, he taught the disciples to remember. And why is that so important? Simply put, remembering reminds us of what Jesus has done, is doing, and will continue to do. Remembering isn't about being sentimental. It's a foundation of our faith. The things that we look back on are moments that help us continue to grow in our faith. 
For those of you who've been following Jesus for a long time, I'm guessing there have been some significant moments that you can remember. Jesus did something for you at camp while serving your community or on a missions trip or in your life group or in your family or when you decided to follow him or when he answered your prayer. In those moments, it's easy to trust him. It's easy to know that he's there and he's good. But I'm also guessing that you don't feel that way every day of your life. It's easy to feel far away or forget why you ever trusted Jesus in the first place. And if that's you, I want you to know something. Jesus hasn't changed. He's the same as he was when you first met him and experienced him. He's the same as he was at the freeze camp or move or mix camp and at the night of worship that you may have been at. He's the same as he was at the first Passover and the same as he was at the last supper. God doesn't change. And Jesus is God in human body. And so we have to remember who God is and what God has done for us. So two things to keep in mind. Number one, remembering with other people is powerful. The Jewish people observed the Passover meal to remind their community of God's love, protection, and faithfulness. They remember the history of God's presence with them and their people in difficult times. They reflect on God's steady guidance and direction in the big picture of life. So what are ways that God has been faithful in your life? There's something powerful about both sharing stories of God's faithfulness with other people and hearing stories about God from other people. One of the best places to share stories like this is in your life group. What would it look like to celebrate God's faithfulness together with your group? And number two, remembering takes work. Maybe you're, you've never done this before. The truth is it, it takes practice and it takes repetition. It's one thing to remember God's goodness, but we need to keep going back to the memories to keep them at the forefront of our mind. Also pay attention to when God shows up and does something on your behalf now. Like we've said before, over time we tend to forget. The Jewish people don't just celebrate Passover when life is difficult. Instead, they schedule specific, consistent, intentional time to revisit a moment when God delivered their community in a huge way. Remembering allows us to trust God, even when it's hard to see how God is working. Remembering helps us to see God in the past so we can trust God in the present. So here's what I know. You are 100% guaranteed to go through difficult times in life. I'm sorry, but it's true. So it's important to decide now that those difficult times won't derail your trust in God. None of us are exempt from challenging moments, but when you experience challenges in the present and in the future, you can lean on the one who has always been there for you in the past. Remembering reminds us of what Jesus has done, it is doing, and will continue to do. So let me pray for you. God, I just pray that you can help us just remember. Remember those good times that we really experienced and felt your presence. And God, I just pray that we don't just pass them off as like, oh, God's not there anymore. But we just know that, you know what? Life has changed. I need to remember that God is that same God now that he was then. So be with us, Lord. Pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Uh, next week, Patience will be with you and uh, she's got a great message as we continue our Easter series. Hope you guys have a great week. Talk to you later. Bye.